good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, Cavaliers Media Day. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, before we get started, a few housekeeping rules. We all know how we handle our press conferences. Raise your hand, uh, give us your name and your outlet the first time through. Uh, the second time as we come through, you just need to ask your question. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our president of basketball operations, Kobe Altman. Hey, everybody. Thanks for, for coming. Uh, before we get started, I want to give a huge Cleveland Cavaliers shout out to the Cleveland Guardians uh, for capturing the AL Central Division title last night. Uh, we're all super excited for them. Um, Chris Antonetti and Tito Francona continue to do a remarkable job. And I speak for Coach and our entire organization. We can't wait to see uh, baseball in Cleveland in, in October. Uh, but congratulations to the Guardians and just wanted to make that acknowledgement. I know they're, they're, having, they're still having fun right now, I'm sure. Um, but uh, with that, we'll, we'll, we'll turn it over to uh, questions. We're now open for questions. Uh, middle section, uh, Emmett, it's coming behind you. Emmett Golden, ESPN, Cleveland. JB, this is, you know, the first time that there's lofty expectations uh, since you've been head coach here. Is that something that you will talk to the guys about? And if so, how will you approach your first season with lofty expectations? Um, it's about embracing who you are. So those expectations don't bring any added pressure. You know, we have a talented group of players in that locker room, um, you know, that support each other, that are there for one another, want to compete with one another. So that's what our focus is on. Uh, if we do the right things, uh, good things will happen for this group. And, you know, we believe that. If we play with the same spirit we played with last year, uh, we defend the way we defended last year, you know, positive things are going to happen for us, and we focus on that. Kenny. Kenny wrote to WHBC Radio for both of you guys. Kobe, the acquisition of Donovan Mitchell, uh, the ability to go get him. Can you just talk a little bit about uh, why you, you thought that was a good fit? And, Coach, how excited are you to have somebody that can create his own and, and add him to that uh, starting five? Uh, so, obviously, we're, we're super excited to add a player of Donovan's caliber to, uh, to, to this mix. Um, I think... You know, Coach has done such a remarkable job uh, growing a culture here, a uh, destination here. I think what you saw last year was a group of players that really enjoyed playing with each other. Uh, there was a joy, there was an atmosphere, there was a connectivity to the city that was really exciting. And I think everyone around the league saw that. And so when, when Donovan heard he was being traded here, he was genuinely really excited. And, and so it's, it started a, um, a, a couple of weeks here of, of great anticipation, um, and we can't wait to get started tomorrow. Uh, and from the basketball standpoint, um, you know, it's obvious what he brings to the table. And, again, going through some of the situations that we went through last year, um, you know, in some of the bigger games, you know, the play-in series, you know, understanding a need uh, of guys who can beat their man and create their own. And Donovan is elite at that, you know, having a guy who's still, you know, relatively the same age as our group and our core, um, but a guy who has a ton of experience. And you think about how many players, you know, numbers increase in the playoffs the way that Donovan's do and, you know, increase from 25 points a game. It's not like it's, you know, 10 to 11, like for him to take that step in big moments, uh, we're going to face those moments uh, and be able to rely on him as well. Chris. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Kobe, for you first, do you believe that you guys can compete for a championship right away? It's a, I knew that question was coming from Chris Fedor. Um, uh, no, I'm <laughs> joking. Um, no, you're right. You're no, right. I, 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 listen, um, I, I said this at, at Donovan's press conference. Um, this year is, is not contention or bust at all. Um, we're still a very young group, um, and we're gaining experience. I think we played, we played 84 games last year. Uh, we most certainly want to play more than 84 this year. Um, but this is a runway, I, I think, that we have here um, with, with multiple years, uh, with guys under contract for the foreseeable future. We want to grow, um, and we want to add more playoff experience and build towards something. Um, but you have not seen – um, Darius yet in his prime. What does that look like? What does the internal growth look like for Evan Mobley? 
Um, Jared Allen's still 24 years old. Uh, this group, uh, we have continuity. I think we've added maybe four new faces uh, this offseason. So we do have a level of continuity, but we added a really big piece. And so that's going to take time. There's going to be some failures there. Um, but this group is really excited to play with each other, and I want to grow this thing over the course of a few seasons before we start talking about that. Uh, with that said, um, we're not going to put a ceiling on what this, this team can do currently. And JB, for you, so much of last year, you guys adopted the underdog mentality, the junkyard dog mentality. With you guys having expectations now coming into this year, higher expectations, what do you want the guys to latch on to and embody? It, it should be the same because we didn't accomplish anything last year. You know, we improved and got better, but, you know, we didn't win a championship. You know, we didn't make the playoffs. Um, so there's no reason for us not to have that same spirit. And you don't change who you are uh, because of expectations. What we were last year, you know, wasn't a fluke. It was a combination of the personalities and characteristics of our guys. So a summer shouldn't change that. Um, so our mentality shouldn't uh, change by any means. Thank you. Kelsey. Kelsey Russo, The Athletic. JB, for you. Um, Looking at Darius' growth from last year, what's your expectation this season as he leads this team at point guard? Uh, I mean, you know, obviously he put the time in this summer um, and worked on his game and, you know, watching, you can see how he has improved. Uh, you know, the next step that we continue to work with is, you know, continuing to play the games within the games, um, you know, understanding what the opponents are trying to take away. But then, you know, the spiritual piece and the emotional piece of, leading this group um you know we've been working with him and every summer and every year you've seen him take steps in those directions um, you know he's a guy that people want to follow they want to see him be successful um, so it's his opportunity and his responsibility to lead those guys in that way so finding adverse situations and difficult moments how he you know galvanizes the group hey i'm talking about you and pulls people together and kobe for you um talking about you know this this runway how do you manage then those expectations because there is this excitement and and this hope for where you guys can go um but kind of leaving that like you said that runway for this year yeah I mean so aside from managing expectations I think the thing that I challenged Darius with right away after our season was over is how do you stay connected you know, how do you continue to grow what you your, what you're building as a leader here um, in this franchise. We're going to be 3,000 miles apart during this offseason. How do we stay connected? And he came back with, a, with, with some of the best players we have to Cleveland multiple times before the playoffs was even over. Uh, we had a group that came out to Las Vegas to work out together and support the Summer League team. Uh, we had a team-led sort of mini camp in, in L.A. and then most recently in Nashville. And so that that's part of our secret sauce in terms of what we want to do um, and what we want to do on the off season. Stay connected, keep building um, this camaraderie. Um, and, and that was a big challenge, but I think we have laid a great groundwork heading into tomorrow for the amount of time that this group has spent together in the off season and really embracing each other. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the growth and, and leadership from Darius on that. Donovan. Basically, uh, they wanted to know uh, how much how much more uh, beep tests we got. That's what they wanted how to many know. More beep First, yeah. explain yeah. to them the beep test. So the beep test is our conditioning test, um, and we've got it a few more times, just so you know. Oh, yeah. If you wouldn't have asked about it, we wouldn't have done it again. Yeah. They just want to play basketball. And you just threw my man under the bus. Great way to start the season. Joe. Joe Varden from The Athletic. This is for either of you. We all saw the injuries over the last however many weeks uh, of last season. Um, but beyond that, when you got into the offseason, you did your deep dive into what happened down the stretch. I'm curious what you saw and what you, what you learned from, from the postmortem. Um, well, you go back and watch it, and, you know, our defense, I think, took the biggest hit. Uh, obviously, you're, you, know, you miss key pieces, um, and you're trying to adjust on the fly. Um, 
but what you realize is just how fragile it all really is. Um, you know, chemistry is fragile. You know, the the details of what you're doing um, and how they impact you know the next rotation or the next step, whatever it may be. You realize how delicate those things really are. So, you know, again, going into the summer. Um, you know, with an emphasis on how we can be consistent in that approach with no matter who the bodies are on the floor. Uh, obviously, you know, we hope, you know, for health, but you're going to have certain games or certain moments where people miss. It's just the nature of our business. Uh, but how we can be more consistent through, uh, you know, those different type of unexpected things. Spencer. Spencer Davies, BassMoves.com. Hey, Kobe. Just wondering, because you said on Donovan's press conference that you feel like you earn the right to you know, make such a huge move and to make a big swing. Um, what makes you feel like you guys earned that right to compete with the top tier of the Eastern Conference? And, and what are you personally expecting to see out of this group, uh, even though obviously you've been very meticulous in the past? So I think, I think, I mean, we have competed with that top level uh, when we were healthy. Um, and and we want to continue to have that that runway and that opportunity to do it. I think why this opportunity was so unique is Donovan's age, and we re we acquired him at 25 years old. Um, and to Coach's point, you know, he's already played in 39 playoff games, and that's what we're hoping to achieve with with this group in terms of some real meaningful playoff basketball moving forward. Um, and so, part of it was opportunity. Um, and then part of it was a conviction on the group that we have, uh, the players that we have in this building and what they can accomplish. And then also adding a uh, talent level with them um, really is a boat of confidence to what we have in-house. Tom. Tom Withers, Associated Press. Uh, JB, you've mentioned culture. You've mentioned camaraderie. <clears throat> they can be fragile things, like you said. You've spent a little time with Donovan now. How confident are you that he's going to, like you've talked about his age and who he is, how he's going to blend in with this group? Um, you know, we're, we're confident um, or we wouldn't have done the deal. And a lot of what we do is, you know, using our resources and our relationships to do background on people. Um, you know, you can see it from the top down. This organization has put, you know, a high level of interest in character. And all those guys back there, you know, and I say this genuinely, there's not one of them who I don't like coming to work and seeing. Um, that's not the case for all places. So, you know, we didn't have to make um, any concessions on character over talent with Donovan. And we had that information before the deal was done. Uh, and that's why, you know, it's a credit to Kobe uh, and Dan from the top down is like, we're not sacrificing people and the quality of people to just jump into something, you know, where we can be uncomfortable just for a win. We got fortunate, <laughs> you know, that the guys that we have are extreme talent, um, but even better people. So being around him, spending time with him, you know, he already had relationships with some of our guys. Um, so we're confident that we'll make it work. It, you know, the on court stuff is going to take some time. Uh, guys have to play together to build that. But from a people standpoint and personalities, uh, we're in a really good place. And if I could follow a year ago at this time, you really didn't know what you had going into the season. You had a lot of pieces, what have you. How much does it help now that you've gone through that season and this year can be more about kind of sharpening the edges, if you will? Uh, I mean, it's helpful when you don't have to do something that's brand new from a system-wise. Uh, so both sides of the ball we have the majority of our guys who understand what we're trying to do. You know, last year, you know, because of the changes we made in our lineups and things like that, the new people we added, you know, we made a major shift in what we did on both sides of the ball. Uh, and this year, we don't have to do that. You know, we just have to uh, include, you know, a couple of new faces. But a lot of those faces are NBA veterans uh, who've already seen a ton of the game and understand, you know, the NBA at a high level. Marla. Marla right now, Akron Beacon Journal. Um, you, either one of you could answer this, but there was so much uh, talk about when Evan was drafted about how his promise. Where can you see the most, you know, potential growth this season? 
I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and JB's gotten to spend. I want JB to answer, but JB's gotten to spend a lot of time with Evan this off season. Um, his commitment has been incredible of what we've challenged him to do. Um, he was one of the contingent that came back to Cleveland multiple times uh, before summer league, um, showing his commitment to the organization and what we're asking him to do. Um, at 21 years old, uh, we're already giving him a, a lot of challenges, not only from the basketball court, but off the court from his strength and conditioning, uh, his nutrition program, all of this to mold him to be what we think he could be. Um, which is which is a superstar. We're 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 we're, we're uh, very excited about about Evan Mobley here. But I think JB can speak to what he's been working on in the off season. Um, and he's about basketball. He's about team. About all the right stuff. And we're really fortunate to have him. Um, you know, our our conversation with Evan and our expectations um, is he has the ability to be a superstar without being the leading scorer on your team, right? He has an opportunity to be the best player on the floor, you know, again, without having to take the most shots. Um, and I think that's hard to find, you know, guys that have that capability, but he does. You know, he can stack, the, he can stuff the stat sheet, you know, in, in, you know, in every category. And, you know, that's our expectation for him. We want him you know, eventually, and hopefully it's this year, to be in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year. Like, we believe he has that type of ability uh, and can have that type of impact on the floor. So, um, you know, very few superstars, uh, which he's going to work his way to be, can be that type of player without dominating the ball on the offensive end of the floor. But we believe he has the ability uh, and will get there. And I know how excited you guys were to get Rubio back. Do you but does it add like another level when you know he's played with Donovan before? Yeah, it's one of those things, again, our front office group and coaching staff and everybody, like you do your research about guys before you acquire them. And we talked about this a little bit last summer, but you know, when you do your homework and you read up on Ricky, you listen to the things that Donovan said years ago when they played together. Uh, obviously, then it was Devin Booker, and then it was Anthony Edwards, and you pay attention to these things. But you know the relationship and how much Donovan, um, you know, showed his respects for Ricky, and how much he said that Ricky helped him. Like those are things that you don't take back. And you know, again, you get an opportunity to reunite guys who have been through those things and already have that experience. It just helps blend the basketball piece of it more quickly as well. Bailey. Bailey Burmaster, Cleveland 19 News. Uh, JB, I have to ask now that you brought it up, as things get underway, what level do they have to hit in the beep test, and who's lasted the longest? <laughs> um, I think Sharif won it this year. Um, I'll have to leave d -Mill tell you the numbers of what the beeps were and all that, but uh, Sharif was the last one standing this year. Karis was second place. Look, Karis, was, Karis put a good run in there. I've got to give Karis some love. <laughs> All right, we've got time for uh, two more uh, down front here. Thank you. Hi, Logan Conger of WZIP Akron. Uh, Kobe, when you acquired Donovan Mitchell, what was it like when you were first introduced to Donovan as the person? And, Coach, how do you think you affect the chemistry in the locker room going forward? Yeah, good question. I w it was uh, my first introduction to him was on the phone after we traded for him. Um, so um, very good conversation. Um, I think the thing that you realize with Donovan from day one is you know, he's very, very genuine. And when I talked to him uh, that first day, you know, minutes after the trade, he found out that we were having a, a sort of a mini camp, you know, player led uh, workouts in, in Nashville. And he said, I'm there. You know, I want to be there. I'm excited to be with my teammates. Um, I think you, you, know, you think about the authenticity that he talks about his teammates, the city, this opportunity. It's real. And, and, and we feel that. And then his actions. I mean, since he's been here, um, he's, had, he's had a lot of fun in Cleveland, you know, whether it be showing up to a Browns game. Um, unfortunately, the Guardians have been out of town, but he's a huge baseball fan, and he hopes to frequent the Guardians games. Um, those are real moments and touch points, and, and, and he's genuine in that. Um, so uh, we're excited. And, you know, since, since we've acquired him, he's been genuine and excited. And uh, obviously, it's going well with, with his teammates. 
Yeah, and the chemistry piece uh, is noticeable. We watched him when they were playing pickup, and you could hear his voice. Um, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we kind of have a quiet group of guys, um, you know, who choose their words very wisely. But he was there. He was vocal. He was communicating. Uh, and I think that's something that's just going to bring it out of the other guys. So I think immediately he, he has an impact there. I would go with that last one down front. Kobe, can you talk – oh, I'm sorry, Dante Bry, FCB, Media, FCB Radio. Um, Kobe, can you talk a little bit about the, the process of going from, con, from rebuilding to contender status um, and just sort of what went into, you know, some of the main moves, right? You, you sort of build through the draft and then, you know, you found yourself in a position, opportunity, and some of the talent that was already on the roster to, to swing big for Donovan. So can you just talk a little bit about that process? Sure. Um, appreciate the question. Um, I, um, I have to give a lot of, of credit um, and admiration really to our chairman and Dan Gilbert. Um, after our you know, four-year run with the finals, um, he, he allowed us in the front office uh, to really go in a different direction and you know, re, say, so, sort, of, sort of recalibrate in a lot of ways. Um, we had to build through the draft. We had to be about something. Um, we wanted to shift our mindset to a player development-driven uh, culture where guys can come here and thrive and feel like they're getting better. Uh, even through the losses, there had to be some victories within the within the losses. Um, we had we were really really fortunate uh, to to bring JB here uh, to Cleveland. Um, he has completely shifted our culture as well, um, and so that was a big part of it. I think we always want to be opportunistic. Um, I think we were certainly one of the most transactional teams. Um, hopefully that doesn't have to be that way for the next few years. Um, but we were always opportunistic with, with our opportunities and, um, and, and, and we're able to add some really talented guys to the draft. Obviously, I needed a partner in JB to help bring them to where they are. I mean, look at the maturation of, of, of Darius Garland. And again, we threw Darius into the fire. He had played four and a half games the previous year in college. But we said we're going to develop him through a lot of minutes um, and, and, and playing the right way. And he became an all-star last year. And so that, there's some real uh, credit to the, the coaching staff to partner with you on uh, that player development kind of, kind of mode. Um, and then with Donovan, we, just, we had enough assets to get it done while keeping our core in place. And so it's been, it's been a fun ride, but you needed total support from ownership on it. Um, and now we're thrilled with where we are. Okay, that's going to wrap up the podium. Uh, first player coming up will be uh, Kevin Love in just a few minutes.